Welcome back everyone to our preview of Distant Worlds 2. My goodness, I can't believe we're back. I wanted to showcase this, these little cutscenes. Oh, unfortunately they load so fast that I can't really see them, but they, they did a good job with those in, in the middle cutscenes. Anyway, we were just at the point of, I teased it, you know, like 40,000 times, but uh, we're really at the point where we should be encountering pirates. Now there's other uh, other things I need to make sure I get to in this video, because people are interested in seeing. I had some comments that, what the ship design, is it gone? No, 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 it's still here. So maybe that's just the first thing we'll look at, in fact. We'll head on over to the ship construction, which has the ship designs. And this um, this should look familiar to you. This is basically the same ship design top menu as it was in Distant Worlds. And, you know, in my playthroughs, you would never see this. This would be just ludicrous to see everything automatic. Maybe this, the civilian ships, but definitely not the state ships, right? No, I, I feel pretty comfortable leaving it to the AI in this. However, you know, I I have done this before. For example, my, my scouts. I did make a little bit of a false claim last time. I said our our people were exploring the stars, that well, really exploring their first solar system, their home solar system, um, without any weapons. And that's not really a true statement. Top shows all the components which are available. Bottom, the current ones equipped on our ship. So you can see that there are um, specific bays which only can, can only hold a specific component item. So this is, this is different. There, there is a difference between the Distant Worlds 1 and Distant, and Distant Worlds 2 ship design. Um, I would say it's a pretty big difference. You now have limited components. and not It's not just about, hey, here's the size over here, 3D9, I'm 400. Fill the ship any way you can, up to uh, 400, meeting the usual crew requirements. You need to have at least the whatever the components demand. Um, and then uh, the other one used to be, what was it? Crew components and something, I forget. I been a long time since I designed a ship in Distant Worlds 1. Um, but anyway, when you're doing it, it needs to meet these criteria, and then you want to make sure the ship has enough power. Look, the game does an awesome job of showing you all that stuff. Now, a lot of this is very similar to what the way it was in Distant Worlds 1, but I think it's maybe just organized a little bit better. It's all in this panel. It's not that single ship design screen, which I can still visualize in my head with <laughs> all the components in the middle and the different menus all over the place showing you various things. So organized a little bit better, perhaps. And, you know, you can add components. So maybe what I would do, for example, on our first ship, if we wanted to min-max a little bit, maybe we make it so our explorer ships were so confident that they're going to be useless in any fight anyway. We just remove... Oh, I can't remove this because it's... In, but let me just copy this. Copy as new. Uh, here's our V2. Maybe I could just remove the plasma torpedo and just say, hey, you know what? We're going to save a little bit of size doing that. Now it has a skip drive, but I don't know, maybe with the extra weight we could... Um, I don't know, is it better to have three ion engines? Maybe we only want two. Let's take a look at our uh, movement. So right now we cruise at 59, which is the most important one for... Actually, I think sprint is pretty important for explorers too. They do get themselves into a pickle quite often. Um, another thing is... Harper drive is 10k here, but the skip drive is okay. It's rated for 10k, so we're not losing any. We're not short on energy at all, which I could have easily have found here. The hyperdrive demands are way under um, what our our demand is. Um, our sorry, our energy output is. So energy output is in the yellow. Do I have two? I do have two space reactors. I was like, this doesn't make sense. And right, look at that. If we drop one of the basic space reactors. We do lose a little bit of speed. I don't know exactly, we, you know, it's just a pro rate of the amount of energy you're supplying um, versus the amount of energy it wants. So it looks like we have three energy overuse, which means it'll be 10%. So it's exactly 10%. It's, it, when I see this nine, I'm like, what, nine point what? It must be rounding. In fact, it's actually 9.000. <laughs> it's exactly 10% off of 10,000, which is some pretty easy math to do. So it drops us down to 9,000. I don't want to get too much into the details. I, I mean, actually, I do want to get into the details, but it's not really the right time yet. We're still in the preview phase. Like, let everyone see the game first before Tortuga goes nuts in his little tutorials and shows all the little min-max corners we can we can optimize over. But for now, Suffice to say, the ship design thing is still all there. It's just a little bit different because now, um, 
not 100% of the space can be used for whatever you want, which wasn't true before anyway, but it's a, a lot less true now. It's a lot more restrictive. Oh, I don't know, a lot more restrictive. But um, this has led to things such as like ship holes actually meaning something. Um, in the previous game, a ship hole was basically just your way of categorizing ships. There was no real limitations on anything. I mean, you could you just basically called a battleship whatever you wanted. Now you have holes which have a specific number of engines. And that, if I can, I won't save this one, but you get the point of that. If I go back over to the research screen, and of course ship design and research, very, very interconnected. Um, there are these different designs. I'm, in fact, that's perfect. I'm right here. Um, we aren't that far down the tree yet, but we have, for example, the escort is here. And then we can get frigates. And we can't see what's beyond frigates yet, but I can kind of spoil something here. This basic military ships, which gives you escorts, leads to a later tier giving you improved escorts. And note that there's a difference between these two. I can't wave my mouse with it because this thing will go away. But you can see on the left, the, the heavy escort has two standard weapons and one large. Whereas the patrol in red on the right only has one standard weapon and one large. So there's these different component bays that you get different ac you know you get access to different numbers of them based on the um, the hole. Uh, so there's a I mean I haven't even I'm not an expert in any of these things. Let me make that clear. But I I can see that there's going to be a lot of room for uh, optimizing your builds or you know doing something specific as you as you want to do. Okay, so out of the exit, <laughs> exit, let's try to make sure we move forward far enough. Funny enough, when I came into the game, it was 50% uh, stable warp fields. And I was like, wait, did I lose the save game? Because you start at 50% of the basic warp drive, the first one. Uh, and I thought that maybe we were doing the early warp field experiments. <laughs> so I thought, oh no. No, no, we're fine. We're fine. Okay, so we'll just let the time advance a little bit further now now that I've shown ship design. Another thing I wanted to show is the interface. Several people have been talking about fonts and all this stuff. And uh, let's just do a quick overview of all the little knobs we can uh, adjust here. Um, I won't, let me just try not to explain too many of them. Focus on the important ones. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, here's one. Um, so we have a user interface size, you can go to large, and if I apply that, it the, the text is a lot bigger. So people who are like, you know, making sure that the font, in fact, it's, it's just too big for me, because <laughs> I am, uh, okay, our, is this our first mining station and finally finished? I mean, I, I play enough games that the first mining station being constructed is, not, I mean, it's not something I've never done before. Oh, this is great, we have a 17% research um, bonus to construction categories if we can get this and I believe this is our is this our sister planet or our moon I'll si assign the mission and let me actually go to is that illness over here it is wow so your your moon usually has some kind of research bonus anyway I do not like the interface size this way you may if you want larger font or whatever we'll go back to standard here and you can set it to even smaller if it depending on how big it is on your screen or whatnot uh, I also wanted to showcase the different um, color schemes. Um, I actually do like a lot of these. I just, I really haven't figured out which one I like the most. Notice that the gray, uh, the, the text that's on the hover and all this, it's going now to a green color instead of that, that gray, which is the default eclipse. And you know, you can guess molten lava is red, crimson. Wait, molten lava is what, this faded red, dark red? No, it's an orange, okay. And then Crimson Constellation is red. Okay. Anyways, you get the point. And I'll let me at least go down to Colorblind Assist. So Colorblind Assist, I suppose, is supposed to help people with colorblind issues. Uh, I'm not colorblind, or at least not that I'm aware of, so that won't help me much. But hey, the option's there. And you can also choose many other things. Well, for example, I've turned down the music. And I've actually adjusted the ship and base symbol scale to be a little bit larger on the Galactic map. You can turn on what options you want. There's also some... Uh, Keybinds you can set there, but anyway, let's just gloss over that as much as, as quickly as we can to get back to the real gameplay, which which is really the good stuff, where the good stuff lies. Uh, yeah, and I don't think this needs any explaining, but oh, get out of my escape menu there. Huh? We got some more resources. What do we have this time? Um, but first of all, let me finish this train of thought for once. Uh, research here. Um, this is how many colonies I have. Population. Oh, it explains itself, of course. Cash flow here with the 
like the daily change. Daily change, I think. Yes, maybe month. I don't know. Let's find out. Monthly change, I'm thinking. Yeah, monthly change. Okay, um, and then obviously the, the date, the speed the game is running at, which goes down to nothing being displayed if it's at 1x, but otherwise it'll tell you. Um, and then I also want to kind of give an overview of this. I know I didn't do a good job last time. Maybe I can do it while the game is um, running at like 1x though. First, let's take a look at what we have here. Derillium Quartz, Zonk, Energy Collectors. So that'll be important. Uh, we'll dismiss that. And I'll just show me on the last one. Bodanthia Root, this is one of our luxury goods. You can see plus 2% population growth. So we do want that one because that's going to help us a lot. And 8% development plus 1% colony income. That's great. So let's go to this planet and see what we have here. And in fact, I'll showcase another way you can build a mining station is by clicking on the solar body and you can build it from the, the menu down here. And this is great. Obviously much exceeds my rule of 50%. So we'll go ahead and queue a mining station here. Thankfully, our construction ships have jump drives so they can hop on over there without, won't take them too long to get there. We already looked at this, so let me dismiss that. And now I can get to this menu while stuff, I'm sure, interrupts me in just a moment. So I talked about my state economy, and I know that this is one of the places where I think you can gain a little bit because you can choose whether to put more into research or more into colony growth. Like one of the things I would like to show is how there's a, a potential research. So right now um, I am getting, so this is my maximum potential research, which is 14 from colony population and 18 from research stations. Obviously there's some rounding going on. It's probably 14 plus 14.4, let's say, and it's 18.4. Um, and those add up to 32.8. So that gives us our rounding up to 33, but you know, you get the point. And then this is where it's uh, this 18 from research stations uh, is showing 32% funding level, 368 credits available, maximum funding can use 368. So if we weren't fully satisfying the, um, the research amount in this section, so you can see it's in, it's in this uh, gray text, but if it was red, that would mean that we aren't giving all of the research amount that we could. And that would prorate that um, the research station amount. The colony research is always the same. You always get that. You don't have to have a research station and you will have some research just from your people living and experimenting and doing whatever they're gonna do. Oh good, Carbonite. Yes, I'll let you distract me. Go ahead and show me. Oh wow, okay, this is, oh, this is a pretty good one. Polymer and Carbonite. Well, we're definitely gonna wanna queue up a station here as well. I'll just do that right away. Because Carbonite is uh, the resources screen. Okay, we'll get over to the resources screen eventually, but it's nice. It's going to show us, you know, what are the things which are important for my empire to acquire. We'll close off that. Okay, continuing on, we, um, if we want to know more of the details about the maintenance, like why is ship maintenance 1000? I have like five ships. Well, this actually includes one thing you should know is it includes ports. So, and I'll show it here. Other state expenses includes the spaceport, which is actually one of the biggest contributor to I mean, you can see that I have multiple exploration ships, I have multiple construction ships, and the spaceport, the one spaceport, is more than either of those categories um, summed up. So, yeah, your spaceport is going to cost money, and it's going to be filed under ship maintenance, which is state-owned ships and bases, you can see in the, the tooltip pop-up there. Anyways, you do all the math, or if you want to figure out anything, I mean, the game just gives you so much info. You can access whatever you want. I'd love to see the Empire bonuses. Let's see how our research bonuses are doing. All research plus 15%, construction research plus 10%. We go over to research. Show me construction down here. And what are you gonna tell me? Uh, oops, storage and that's the wrong one. Colonization, where's construction? I, I'm tilting my head sideways. Commerce, command, corner. Construction, here it is. So if I press my cursor here, there on the top, right below the right below the research category, you can see plus 25% research speed for this project. So yeah, just verifying that, hey, all that is working, but you can get access to all your bonuses, empire-wide bonuses right here, which is nice. Some games make it a little bit harder for you to find that all out. Um, we have diplomacy, which <laughs> I keep teasing it, but eventually we will find some pirates. Um, we have our characters. I don't mess around with these too much. I, I'm gonna leave them all automated. Let's just actually, we'll take a look at our leader for a second here at least. 
Diplomacy, which again I already mentioned I think is useless. Civilian con ship construction. I probably should mention at some point something about the civilian versus the, I mean the private versus state economy. Because uh, that is one of the crux, one of the cruxes of this game is this uh, duality where um, in most games you have just one economy running everything. And yeah, if you're wondering where Stellaris got the idea from, I can't say for sure that it was from Distant Worlds. Just the same way I, I actually thought at first that um, Distant Worlds got it from Aurora, which apparently wasn't true. So you never know where people get their inspirations from. More than one person can have the same idea in isolation. We see that with scientific papers all the time, where it's like, oh, in 1979, this group discovered this, and then 1980, another group completely unknown, unbeknownst to them, <laughs> the other group had already discovered it, also thought they discovered it somewhere else. Okay, anyway, let's go up to 4X, and really we're just waiting on the pirates at this point. So yeah, this first opening part of the game, we can really speed through, and if we want to manage anything, we should be managing our resources, which brings me to that screen. Uh, the first category, the first tab is just going to show us which resources are in great demand and the economy behind the game makes it so that, you know, if a resource is in more demand, hey, it costs more money, which means that's bad, right? We don't, okay, hey, <laughs> there it is, pirates. <laughs> finally, finally. Okay, so I, I thought a lot about this. I don't want to talk too much about it right now because there's enough that needs saying that I can't dwell on it. But I really think pirates are a brilliant part of the game cycle. Um, and we'll see this. I mean, it, it plays out just really well. It doesn't play out differently than in Distant Worlds 1. But I just have only, in the last maybe two or three years, come to appreciate the brilliance of this game design. Anyway, the pirates show up, and if you don't pay them off, they will attack you. And I did mention that, okay, our, explore, our exploration ships do have that one gun. I can tell you that's not going to be enough. We're going to deal with, I don't know, probably strengths of around 100, and we may have a strength of 20 right now. So what this means is we have to accept their gift to us, quote-unquote gift to us. What their gift is, is they will allow us to pay them so that they don't kill us, which is, at this point, something that we will accept. Now, I don't think we're going to continue this relation forever. If they were Akdarians, we might consider entertaining like a, a long-lasting relation with them. But they're not, so they're probably not going to be on my list of friendly pirates as the game goes later into the... I mean, as the game progresses. Anyway, now notice the funny thing is... Let me just pause real fast. Oh, we have another pirate faction. One sec. Okay, sorry, we're back. Uh, man, the words have just left my mouth about not being friendly unless they're Akdarian pirates, and look what happened. First contact with the Akdarian pirates has happened simultaneously here, so we're, we're going to have a very busy uh, little moment of time here. We're going to have to deal with two pirates all at the same time. So yeah, these guys are going to take our money, and it's a huge amount of money. And I, I was going to I'm just gonna gloss over my whole like game design, pirate game design is amazing uh, speech. We'll have to save that for you know another playthrough. So we're done with these guys for now. They're gonna actually, I, I don't even know if they protect you or not. In theory, they're supposed to. I don't know how it works. I haven't really paid close attention to see if another pirate attacks us. Do they actually lend a hand? I mean, we're paying the money to do that potentially, but really I, I feel like we're just paying them off not to kill us. So that's, I mean, that's my my expectation is at least that they don't kill us. And you can see, oh my gosh, their pirate strength is 191. It's actually quite high. So we, we had definitely had no hope. Um, and again, just to showcase the ship, like the exploration ships that we have, um, have a, a value, combat value of six. So six versus 200. We have what, three of these? So 18 versus 200, you know, it's 10 to 1. But uh, yeah, now we have another pirate encounter. And this does happen in the beginning. You kind of feel piled on. Don't worry, it's all part of the... It's a really cool system, which I'm not going to talk about now. But, but basically, it forces you to either choose to be militaristic or to be economic. Uh, with your, I mean, you can choose to be uh, go the military route, which will save you money because you won't have to pay off these pirates. But you'll spend your entire time... A lot of your economic, I mean, your uh, economic development, but empire development will be spent fighting pirates. So it's a really nice trade-off. I mean, I just, I really do think it's brilliant. And that's the, 
the summed up version of what I wanted to say. So we'll go ahead and say, oh yeah, first contact. It's not really first contact. And that's what I was going to say. Look what my advisor is suddenly suggesting. Hey, guess what? We realized that we're going to need a Navy. Why don't you build some escort ships? Right now, I'm in decline. We have no hope of really defending ourselves against these pirates. I have no like other game plan other than to pay them off. So in my opinion, if I'm going to pay them off anyway, I might as well not spend the extra money on uh, my own military ships. We're just going to, we're, you know, just completely foregoing military for the moment, all for the sake of economic development. Okay, so yeah, the, look at their generous gift. We will allow you to pay us protection money for 125 credits a month. Yeah, very nice view. Okay, so these guys are going to ask us to accept the same treaty. We will accept. They'll be like, hey, that's awesome. Any unfortunate accents? Yeah, so we already paid that. Um, that can go away. At least on the positive side of things, we've discovered uh, some more. Uh, what planet are we looking at here? Got some Kasadi, Decorian Ale, and Hexadorium. Now this is, we actually do want to, I, I do want to look at these. So 3% calling development is good, but not amazing. 1% happiness is good. And it is very strong and damage resistant and may have uses high in components. Okay. Okay. So it's, it, this is actually a strategic good, which I haven't used. Or at least I don't remember using it. I probably just had it in my empire and I didn't really know what was using it. Uh, anyway, so this is another place which we are going to build a mine station at. There you go. Yeah, so look at that gift from those Actarian pirates. But the Actarian pirates, there is a, a... You can kind of develop good relationships with them. And uh, that's especially important for some of the events later on in the game. But um, anyway, we're not going to worry about that. Hey, look at this. These people who... These pirates who, although they demand us pay them their their money, uh, they also are willing to sell us an unknown system map for 3600 Now, I don't think I would normally accept this, but I am going to just for the sake of showing a little bit more about the map. Because right now, we don't know anything about our galaxy, and I wanted to make this very clear that you can, if you want with a ship, go to the middle of nothing. You can go to the void in space, and that's always been one of the things I've loved, I've loved about Distant Worlds is that it models space as a mostly a void, which is so true. Which means that, I've always talked about the, the cool strategies you can do is, you can literally park a fleet outside of the solar system. Think like twice the distance beyond Pluto away from the sun. If you put a fleet there, it's the, the chances of the sunlight hitting it, reflecting off of it and being showcased, at least by light, by you know visual light, is very low. Um, I'm assuming that the cross-section profile would be very small, and it's just very small chance that the light would actually reflect off it and come back and hit a detector. So th th you could do those little strategies here, and it's one of the only games I've I know about that has has this. And you know, even Aurora 4X, for all its vaunted details and stuff, doesn't really model this. It only has basically uh, an inner system. It doesn't really have the void of space. It has jump gates. Okay, um, so you are asking for this. We already. No, we, I, I want to zoom out, and then we'll accept it. Okay, which which, which would you give us? Sakuru. So maybe Sakuru is around here somewhere? Or maybe it's somewhere across the map? It should appear as... Uh, oh, there it is! We know about this place. Sakuru, which is not very useful. First of all, it doesn't really have anything on it. Um, it has a planet which we don't... Oh, no. We know that there are none resources. That's not a good sign. <laughs> there are none resources. And... This is... The only good thing we know about this system is that we know it's useless and completely invaluable to us. And not invaluable. Not valuable. <laughs> it's not invaluable. Okay, but they, we... Okay, maybe I missed some stuff. Okay, show me. Where did I miss this one? Ah, I'm. Nope, nope. That's in our system, so I did not miss anything on that other one. Uh, but Tolkai has is the the moon of Hultumu Eight, which was also a good find because it has Castlon. This one has Jacanta Ivory. I remember that one distinctly from Distant Worlds One. Vodkal, yep. Yeah. Colony happiness in that. Um, population growth with the Norjack eggs. And Tadirios, okay, this is a good one. We have to build, 
So how are our construction ships doing? Let's go over to the construction category. Look at our construction ships and we see that they are all busy. Well, it sounds to me like it's time to build yet another construction ship and we will keep them busy. So now we can kind of dismiss all these windows just to keep Tortuga sane. And we're running at 4x, I mean, we're breezing right along. So let's also go over to the economy and just see what this, uh, what this new found, these newfound friends of ours have done to our economy. So see how our ship maintenance was 1500 and troop maintenance is 200. Oh my gosh, it just keeps coming. Uh, now note that our other expenses has suddenly jumped up to 1500 and it's, we're expecting, I'm, I'm expecting that this will grow. This is the money that we're paying, and you see it right there, e.g. pirate protection. Okay, so fire, fire invaders have been found, and well, lucky us, we're just <laughs> gonna have to accept yet another treaty, 125 per month. Uh, it's painful, 125 per month, it's very painful. So 125 a month gets us to 1500, which means we're up to 4500 already, yikes. Uh, I mean, obviously, this is just going to really eat away at our economy, but that's okay. We can, you know, we'll just have to handle it. We don't really have a choice until we can build some of our own uh, military ships. But I like to kind of do things in spurts, you know, like let's make sure we unlock a few good technologies. What are our ships going to be? They're not even very useful until they have like, we don't have shields or armor research. We don't, all they are, they're like... I mean, they're like the rocket ships that the U.S. and, I mean, the world, I should say, not just the U.S., but, you know, SpaceX, all these places, they send up right now. They're just metal. <laughs> if they have any kind of protection, it's against, like, maybe it's lead or something against radiation, but it's not meant to stop a bullet. So, okay, research station constructed. That's great. So our research um, capacity should go up greatly as well. Okay, great. So now we can encounter sipping, sipping the Confederation. Uh, it's another pirate faction. Guess what? No surprise there. They, uh, they're attacking us. Looks like we're going to have to accept yet another treaty. And if you're counting, I think that's, we're up to five now. Um, they, my advisor wisely wants me to build these ships, but I'm still going to say no. And we were under attack, but that's gone now because now we paid them off. So they're happy. We'll just dismiss that and off we go. So the funding levels, just can't wait for those other expenses to be refreshed. Uh, when we come back to it. Oh, looks like we got next research and Hey, what did you know? I had, I think I had already queued up um, the uh, the shields, and we will crash research it. Can we? I will crash research it because uh, right now I feel like I'm always see I'm always the kind of person who will trade almost anything for more research. I just I'm a researcher. I just love research. Now this is interesting. They want us to build two other exploration ships and one construction ship. And why is that? Well, I didn't really. I kind of glossed over it. Oh yeah, new warp drive, but. The new warp drive that we have now received has given us the capability to go inter, like intersol, uh, like in, intersystem, intergalactic. No, not intergalactic, but interstellar. Interstellar. <laughs> it's so sorry. You guys also didn't catch my little slip up with geosynchronous last time. Thank goodness. But now that I mentioned it, it's out there. Uh, yeah. So we uh, we will build these ships because now we have the capability of going beyond our system. And I honestly, I want to watch. Let's make sure I have the exploration team up. I want to see when is the first person who is, oh my gosh, you gotta, you just gotta stop. Well, they will attack us and we will be in pain for that. Okay, we're already researching this. Well, we do need to set up another research category after this. If we want to start looking towards our own defense, and I think that that's probably gonna be a wise way for us to go, I probably want armor plating after that and maybe, I don't know if we'll do any upgrade weapons. I mean, I, I showcased that you can do the better, go to the construction side of things again. Uh, I showcased that you can do the better um, improved escorts, but I think even the frigate would be really nice. And there's like, I mean, we got all kinds of things in here, but the first tier is a lot cheaper in terms of research than the second tier. So we ought to start with those things as much as possible. We should be prioritizing those. Okay, we'll accept yet another gosh darn treaty and just wait to see how negative our budget is gonna go. That's okay, we'll manage it, but okay, retrofit. That's right, of course these things have to retrofit because they're on the old, they're on the old jump drive. So they're gonna fly home. We'll watch this one. Fly home. 
Oh, he's retrofitting at the home planet itself. He didn't actually go over to the spaceport. Oh my goodness. This is, I mean, this is, I would say, a, a record bad start as far as pirates go. I don't know if there's ever been... Uh, we only have six? Okay, now six is fine. I, I've never had more than six, so I've had six before. But look at these numbers. This is a... This is 634, my goodness, that's a lot. That's a lot, that's a lot. Yeah, so I think pirates may... Um, Help you protect the home. Oh my gosh, minus 3,000. Now, okay, now we can start being concerned about <laughs> what's going on. We'll, we'll definitely switch to a military focus for quite a little while here. Okay, new construction ship has been completed. Dismiss that. New ambassador. Show me, new ambassador. Okay, we'll leave him on automated. He can do whatever he wants. But no, I, I usually associate the ambassadors. They can do, I think they can do some fun stuff, with, mostly with other empires, not with pirates. At least, I don't know what they'll do with pirates. Maybe appease them a little bit more. But mostly, I wanted to see this exploration. Who is going outside? I'm waiting. Somebody's leaving the construction yard. Retrofitting. Yeah, he's coming in. I want to see our first interstellar jump. Oh my gosh, seven. Yeah, this is a record. <laughs> you can turn down the pirates if you're interested, but uh, I'm just going to leave them for now. This is a lot of money. We probably don't need to pay all of them, but I'm just going to click through. Yeah, 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 I get it. Oh, wait, are you going? No. I'll do more. Yeah, all of them are local still. I could do this manually. You know, I could just get them, one of them to jump, but... I'd rather watch them do it themselves. It's more satisfying, you know, when you don't have to push them to do the right thing, they just do it. Um, yeah, we probably want, okay. Yeah, we have a, if we have a shortage of silicon, that, that's really important for me to solve. For to have that solved very quickly. Still looking, nobody's deciding to go outside, huh? Hey, they're still trying to build it at the asteroids around my planet. Oh, I didn't. I didn't actually figure out what I wanted to do with that either. Okay, this is just getting absurd. It can't be right. Is that really eight? It is. Well, we're gonna pick some friends and foes as soon as like, somebody just jumps outside the ding dong system. Okay, we got a lone trader. Hey, well, hey, this is, it's nice to know that there are other ships outside of our uh, outside of our empire ships which aren't entirely hostile like this lone trader and these are nice because they do help bring stuff you know bring stuff when you're out of it and kind of help you trade for goods that you don't have um, you're taking a long time to leave the control no dang it. all of them in the hotel oh, i mean we must we must have a lot more things to discover here Okay, now traders, the independent trader tells us of a nearby colony, which I would like to go to. Which means that we actually know about another system now. This system is a Gazurian colony. That is not close. So we know of a Gazurian colony. Gazurians are not bad. They're they're very, um, uh, what's the word? Submissive, I would say. Uh, they, yeah, they don't have any aggression. You can see it here. No caution, no dependability. Neutral. But I mean, the, the species of Gazurians are, are not very aggressive. So that's that's kind of nice. We don't have to worry about it. You can see that we're automating our strategy towards them. What we want to do in order to take over this territory is to use diplomacy. If I turn this off, we can switch to invasion, which is when it's available. Uh, I'll leave it on automated, though. We'll, um, I'm not going to pursue a, an aggressive, hostile um, strategy against that. Oh, look at this. Nine escorts. Well, I'm still going to decline this. Because we're on the verge of getting our d deflectors, and I'm, I might as well build... Ah, who are the Gazurians? Okay, here they are. Insectoid, aggressive and unfriendly. Oh, no, these guys are aggressive. Okay, never mind. I'm, I must be... I think I'm mistaking this for another one. I've played as the Gazurians before. No, I think I actually like the to play as them. Yeah, very high reproductive rate is, is fantastic. Um, and I, there's also... You can bring up the um, Galactopedia here, which has all the different... And races, choices, what are they called? Uh, 
the government's position. I mean, I, I'm probably move, like glancing right over it and have not just found the right one. Diplomacy, relation factors, treaty types, empire reputation, and colonies, and pirates, military facilities, ship costs. Okay, here it is. <laughs> Alien races. Just had to scroll down a little bit further. So we can see that the Gazurians are here. Um, I think it's okay that I show these screens. We're not allowed to play as them. I don't even know if the Gazurians are a playable uh, alien race in the beginning. I believe that they are, but I'm not sure. So you can see that they are not very friendly towards other people. So I can definitely correct my original statement. What are the bonuses they get? Colony de defense, corruption reduction. That's actually quite good. And uh, troop recovery rate. But not anything research oriented, but also no penalties for research. So going back to the Akdarians, we can see that they do have these bonuses, which are really nice. Humans, I mean, the humans are one, yeah, it's kind of a natural thing for most people to try out at least once. They have a bonus to diplomacy, war awareness reduction, whereas I think it's the opposite. Also, they do get the research plus 5% and the trade in income. What do the Akdarians have again? Ship construction, I'm not sure if, con okay, construction research is good. Ship maintenance is good. Ship construction speed, I don't know if this one is that great. Ship energy savings is good. Okay, so I see, instead of doing the ship size bonus, which was what they were in uh, System Worlds 1, now instead it's um, energy savings. Okay, that's that's fine. So we'll dismiss that. That's not a colony that's gonna be something very important to us in the very beginning. Oh my goodness, what happened here? Well, what I, what I can tell you is, now it's probably time for us to take a look at the private economy. Because although we're bleeding money, we're just hemorrhaging money, <laughs> just bleeding it everywhere. How are we actually able to maintain any kind of income? And this is hopefully going to tell most of the story here. Um, we have an annual income projected to be 4000 and we have annual expenses projected to be negative 8000 Note that this is might even be less than what it actually is since this does not inc uh, include the research speed, the research cost for doing crash research, um, which we, we are going to continue to do. So that's going to increase the, or further make negative the cash flow. What, what could possibly save us here? Wow. How could we get up to 75,000? Oh my goodness. 55,000 in annual bonus income. What the heck is this? Well, um, the civilian economy, when they want to build ships and such, they build them from the state, which means they essentially they buy the right to build a ship from you and then you build it for them and they give you a lot of money. And you can see that because our private economy is flourishing, they have, well, 100,000 is not that much for them actually. Uh, 20,000, this is decent. I mean, they're they're making a lot of money. I mean, a lot more than, uh, than we are. Uh, but when the private economy flourishes, they're able to contribute to the, the state economy by buying things. So this is really where this huge influx of money came from. I'm still gonna wait until we have um, armor before we um, do our military transition, but now we're in a really good sh we're in a really good situation, really good shape. So that um, this is not an injection that you can rely on. I mean, you can rely on it in a very long-term sense, but you don't know when their purchases are going to come because it's the private economy. They're going to do what's best for them. Now, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to call the video to a close here. I'm having so much fun with this, but. Time is already almost up to 40 minutes. So we'll put a break in. I'll see you back for video three. I'm trying to get these out like once a day, uh, do at least one a day for at least the first four or five episodes. And I hope you're enjoying it. Thanks for watching again. I'll be looking for your comments and answering those below. And until the next one, stay safe and take care.